I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I've been getting a lot of questions about education options for families or people who are moving with kids here to Nicaragua, and I think it's something we need to talk about. Now, I'm going to preface this right away before we dive in. I am not an expert in this, and I'll explain why, uh, but very few people are. It takes a lot to be an expert in education because it really requires doing a lot of research and going from school to school and uh, traveling and, and potentially working with kids. Like, it takes a lot to research how schools compare to each other uh, in a really meaningful way. Going from school to school and spending lots of time with their entire programs over the length of time it would take to do a real evaluation is impractical if it's even possible. So that's not something people can normally do. They have to do a very cursory look at the way that education is approached, at what specific classes are offered and so forth. It's very difficult for anyone to do. So we're going to do the best we can to provide you some information because people do have a lot of questions. And most importantly, people ask me and I need to be able to point them to what resources I do have. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to get to that right after the bump. All right, so many people know that I live here and moved here with my family, which includes my wife, of course, and our two children. I have two daughters who are currently aged 12 and 15. When we first moved to Nicaragua long ago, they were three and six. So the uh, educational process is something that we've had to consider since the very beginning. We've had them here for very many years, and of course they are being educated. So it is natural that people come to me and say, hey, what are you doing? What have you seen? What options exist? And I have my coughing dog in the background. She has uh, kennel cough at the moment, but she is getting treatment and feeling better. Uh, so First of all, what do I do? So a lot of you know, but to set the groundwork, we have from the very beginning, before we even started considering what preschool or kindergarten would look like for our children, we had made the determination that we were going to homeschool. Now, my wife and I both have backgrounds as having been involved to some degree as educators in both uh, high school, middle school, and university level. And my wife has a lot of family, and I have some as well who are young uh, educators, right, focusing on uh, kindergarten and special needs, those kinds of things. So we have a large scope of either access to resources or some small experience of our own directly, uh, and we're able to teach a lot of things. So not everyone is really cut out for homeschool, not to say that there's anything wrong with not being prepared to do that. Of course, that's fine. Everybody's got different skill sets. We happen to be very well situated for being homeschool educators. And so that is a path that we decided to do very early on. And for us, that was a decision from the beginning, knowing that we were going to move and live abroad and probably move around a lot, which we have done, and potentially live in places where education would not be provided or available. We wanted to have that flexibility and knowing who we are as people, the chances that our children would not benefit from an incredibly custom education was very low. So all these things came together and knowing our children as they prepared to be school ages, it really did make sense for us to homeschool. So there's a lot of reasons beyond where we live, where we have lived, what our lifestyle is like, and so forth, that all come together to say that for us, homeschooling makes sense. And for a lot of you, especially those coming from the United States, homeschooling may make sense. There are so many resources today, especially in the U.S., to allow for homeschooling both in the U.S. and when you are abroad, which could involve traditional homeschool, where you simply teach your kids yourself, or self-education, where the kids pick their own educational tooling, such as using textbooks or uh, whatever, right? They put their own thing together. And when I did university, that's how my university was. So simply approaching uh, high school like you approach university in the, the top end universities, because uh, top end universities, right? They don't give you a set curriculum. So some people opt for that. Other people opt for simply distance learning, which you can argue isn't really homeschool. It's just schooling at home, which makes you wonder why they use the term homeschooling when that's not what they mean. But regardless, there are those resources as well. And so for a lot of people, for example, we are Texas residents in the United States. So if we chose for our kids to actually go to school in Texas per se, the state of Texas would provide us a completely remote accessibility classroom where our kids could do traditional public school, have a traditional public school uh, diploma at the end of the day, and do that completely through the state of Texas without ever it being, never being classified as homeschool. They would simply not be in the physical school, and we can do it from anywhere in the world. All those and probably other options exist within the homeschool or nearly homeschool context. So it's worth considering whether homeschool might be right for you or something that's a distant learning that gives you that flexibility of a homeschool, but is actually a regular public or private school that you're doing remotely. All those things are options, 
But those you probably know about. If you didn't, then hopefully this was informational. And if you have specific questions about any of those, I will do my best to answer them. As always, get down there and ask in the notes below. And not very many of you have sent in video questions or comments or stories. Those are awesome. Um, I know Andrew has. I know Jillian has. Uh, I, uh, Alan has, but I haven't been able to use his yet. Um, but I, that is fantastic. Everyone has, that I've talked to is like, it's so cool when you put people on the show. Like, that really is neat. We get to connect to the audience. I'd love if more people sent in their questions or comments that way. That'd be fantastic. So consider that. And if you have any questions how to do that, that's all in the show notes. Every single episode has that information as well as how to sponsor the show and, and links to things, my other episodes, all those things. Okay. So you have, you, you decided that homeschool or something like homeschool isn't right for your kids. And that's a lot of people. It isn't right for those. So great. What are your options here in Nicaragua? Well, so Nicaragua is a very flexible place and there are a lot of private schools. Of course, you could look into using the public school. I have no idea what it takes to get into the public school program. I don't know if Nicaragua will let you even as residents. I don't know if they'll let you. So that I can't answer anything about, but I can tell tell you that I have only once in all the time that I've talked to anyone had someone even entertain the idea of having their kids go to the Nicaragua public school. Not that it's a terrible school system, but not that it's a great one either. Uh, but really importantly, it is designed completely around the needs of Nicaraguan citizens, uh, and it is completely based in Spanish. So if you are already a Spanish speaker and you're completely fluent in Spanish and that you think that would make sense for you, then absolutely you could pursue that and you may find uh, that some of the schools would let you uh, send your kids there. I don't know. But if you don't speak Spanish, there's not going to be any resources for your kids to go there and not speak Spanish. So that would be quite a trial by fire. And I don't know anyone who would find value in putting their children through that. They would not, under normal circumstances, learn Spanish fast enough, and it would be uh, very detrimental to the rest of their education. They'd be heavily held back, and it would not uh, be carried on and be useful anywhere else. And uh, getting a Nicaraguan diploma is not going to specifically help you in some great way that just doing homeschool wouldn't do. So I don't know why anyone would want to do that. It just doesn't have the practicality of a lot of other things. But if you're a special case and you have a bunch of reasons, maybe there's something I haven't thought of, of course, that may be a path, but I simply can't answer it. I don't know anyone who could. Uh, as far as private schools, there are lots of private schools. This is both because there are expats, but also it is very common for Nicaraguans to send their kids to private schools. In the United States, you tend to be upper middle class before you start sending your kids to private schools for the purpose of education. Some people send their kids to private schools for other reasons, then you, you get it everywhere. But the, the high-end schools, the high-end private schools tend to be very expensive, and you have to be upper middle class or higher to have a real chance of being able to afford them. But here in Nicaragua, that's a bit different, and you start to get people sending their kids to private school when they're in the very, very lowest tiers of the middle class. As soon as you're able to start having uh, a, your own house rather than living with your parents, and I'm sure some people give up having their own house so they can live with their parents and send their kids to private school, but you find people at income levels you would never imagine entertaining private schools actually making that a major part of their investment. It could be the largest budget item that they have or second only to their, their mortgage or their rent. Uh, so it is a really common thing. So private schools exist absolutely everywhere. Where I grew up, in the United States, there was one private school over an area of maybe five or six towns at least with no alternatives, and it may have been an even bigger area. In fact, the public school that I went to took 10 towns to supply the students for that one public high school. So the area that was being covered by a single school was quite large. Here in Sutiaba, uh, many of you know, we're in the barrio of Sutiaba here, which is the western and relatively poor barrio uh, here in Leon, Nicaragua. Just in this barrio alone, there are a number of private uh, colegios or high schools, and often those will go younger as well. And we have one non-colegio. It is a private school that is not high school. It's everything else, uh, just elementary, right? And they, they're adding a year every year, but it's like uh, currently K through 6th or 7th, I think. Uh, so eventually Eventually, they'll probably become a colegio, but for now, they're just the younger years. Uh, but private, focused on very high-end education, often in English, but not 100%. There's a lot of private schools that are also just in Spanish because so many of them are just for Nicaraguans who are middle class and want to send their kids and get them a little bit more college prep or whatever and make them a shoe in for the university of choice. A lot of the universities here are free, and some of them that are, that are a little bit higher end are that you pay, but the pay is very low. So people who are going to private high school often have the option of paying for a private university as well. 
with all of that, you find just a lot of private schools that you can pick from. And those private schools, while they may be in Spanish, may have resources if your children decide to go there that they may be able to work something out to transition into Spanish and not have to just hit the ground running with no resources. There may be people who can speak English. I don't know. But there are lots of private schools that also have accommodations for English speakers. Now, here in León, you're going to get a heavy leaning towards the Spanish only. The number of international schools that are available out here is very, very low. Whereas if you go to someplace like San Juan del Sur or Granada, you're going to get a lot more international schools because they have large expat communities and they have to deal with a fair number of English only speaking students who need to be accommodated in that area. So they have schools for that. Here in Leon, I don't know of any that specifically accommodates that. I do know schools that are in English right here in Sutiava. So if we have them in Sutiava, I assume they have them in the other barrios as well, but it's going to be much more few and far between. You're going to probably want to, uh, Pick out the schools that are of interest to you and make those decisions before you move into Leon, for example. But if you were going to San Juan del Sur, you could just live in San Juan del Sur and there will be school options. You don't have to worry about where you live in the town. That's kind of the important difference there. You'll have in, in San Juan del Sur, you'll have uh, choices between, well, I like this school. I don't like this one, whatever. Here in Leon, it may be, well, this is the only one that offers what we really want in our part of the city. So uh, the options do exist. There are private schools, and you're going to find this throughout the country. But be aware, and this won't affect very many people, but if you decide to live in some place that's truly out there, you're in Chinandega, you're in Huigalpa, you're in Boaco, I don't expect you're going to find any English language uh, schooling out there at all. Even the public schools are unable to hire English-speaking teachers. They'll have English classes, but the teachers won't be able to speak English in most cases. So it's not a very good English education. They certainly couldn't accommodate students who spoke English. They would actually have a problem that the teachers who spoke English wouldn't be able to understand the students who spoke English because the teachers often don't actually speak English. So you have to be really careful uh, when you get into those remote areas. But as long as you're in Managua, for sure. Managua is going to have lots of schools. You have no problem whatsoever. Granada should have no problem. Messiah, I anticipate no problem. If you did have a problem, you would travel to Managua or Granada. That's viable from there for students. Be a little bit of a pain, but it'd be far less of a travel than I had to do just growing up in New York, uh, which was uh, well over. It was about two and a half hours per day was my my bus time to go to school, uh, to a school that I literally could walk to, but it took hours to walk to, Like, but I did sometimes. Um, uh, if you're in San Juan del Sur, you're not going to have any problem. If you're here in Leon, you definitely have options. As you start to get more further afield, I assume Matagalpa, you're probably okay. Esteli, you're probably okay. But Hinotega, I'd be surprised if there was anything. Uh, Chinadega, I would be absolutely shocked. Uh, and if you get to any small village, you're going to be out of luck. So you will have to do some amount of planning around being in a location that has the schools that you want. So you may not be able to just choose any property anywhere, which is a little bit limiting. But there are a large number of private schools. You definitely have those options. There are ways to get your kids around other kids, to get them sitting in a classroom. And in many cases, you could uh, opt to do that and blend it with other things, whether it's it's blending it with homeschooling, blending it with an American or other uh, online education. And if you're coming from somewhere other than the U.S., you may or may not have a lot of options around how you approach school. So it's going to depend on your uh, home jurisdiction and what they allow. Uh, this can get really complicated in some cases, but normally if it's really complicated, your country will be providing an online option so that you can live abroad and do the education that they want. Or they may require that you go to a classroom and then you have to deal with what they consider to be a viable classroom. And that's really up to them. It's really all about who pays who to get on their approval list. So hopefully that is helpful. I don't know a ton because my kids homeschool, so we don't spend a lot of time evaluating schools. But I do have friends who use some schools, but very happy with the results right here in Sutiava. I've had other private schools that I've not interacted with myself, but I have viewers who have attended those schools and said they got a great education. Also here in Sutiava, uh, that they're very happy with, and I know of other people who've done work with and send kids to schools like in San Juan del Sur and Granada. So those, those all definitely exist. There's lots of options. But it is not the United States. It is not Canada. You're not going to be able to go to just any town anywhere and find really good education options. You're going to have to limit yourself to uh, one of just a handful of major locations that can deal with expats. You may get lucky in some place like Hino, uh, Hino Tepe and Didiamba in the center. Those are the Carrasso cities, uh, San Marcos as well. Because of all the universities there, there may be some private colegios that could also accommodate uh, expats. But there's so few expats there that I wouldn't bank on it. You'd have to do some research. Uh, but Leon, Granada, probably Messiah, definitely Managua, San Juan del Sur for sure, probably Esteli and probably Matagalpa are going to be able to accommodate you anywhere else 
I'd be very surprised. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, post on social media, copy this link somewhere, send it to someone on an email, tell a friend about the show, get your parents to watch, get your kids to watch, get your brother, your cousin, your nephew, someone is interested in learning more about living abroad, digital nomadry, becoming an expat, whatever. I will see all of you tomorrow. And to just make supporting the show that much handier, four episodes are going to pop up on the screen under most circumstances. Just click on one of them or choose another episode from the show, and that tells the algorithm that you'll love it here so much.